Our scripture this morning comes from the sixth chapter of John. Where I'll be reading the 24th through the 35th verses. Let us hear the word of God. Once the crowd realized that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum in search of Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? And Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, you are looking for me not because you saw miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. And on him, God the Father, has placed his seal of approval. And then they asked him, what must we do to do the works that God requires? And Jesus answered, the word of God is this, to believe in the one who he has sent. So they asked him, what miraculous sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? And what will you do? Our forefathers ate the manna in the desert as it was written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, from now on, give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. Sisters and brothers, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want to begin this morning by thanking you. Thanking you for the incredible work you do with the Bethany Cafe and the incredible work you do in all the mission work that you do and how you reach out, how you dare to care, how you share the life-changing love of Jesus Christ in deed and in word. Hunger is an ever-present reality in our world. And in the United States, we have made great progress compared to first century Galilee. That is very true. We have made great progress compared to the first century. But the reality is still there. Hunger is still pressing. And thank you for all the ways that you reach out. Let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The scripture passage this morning is complicated and it leaves us with many questions and the new testament theologian and i'll probably try to pronounce this word two or three times right now because i'm gonna get it wrong but the new testament theologian sakari hutkin wrote in the ancient world poverty was a visible and common phenomenon nine out of ten people in Galilee in the first century lived at subsistence level. And subsistence level means that you have just barely enough food to get by. Just barely enough resources to get by. The middle class, as we think of it, didn't exist. Social safety nets, such as Social Security, such as Medicaid, such as unemployment benefits, were non-existent. Of that 90% of the population, two-thirds of them lived in extreme poverty. Last week in the sermon I talked about just how beautiful Tabga is, how it's just this beautiful rural area and, it, and you could just visualize Jesus being there with the 5,000 and feeding them. I also mentioned in the sermon last week how some 
18th and 19th century European theologian said that the miracle that really happened that day was that Jesus inspired everyone to share. It was a miracle of sharing, that people pulled out fishes from their coats and their baskets and everything else. And you know, if you and I went out to have a picnic somewhere, you know, I'd bring a huge basket, right? And I'd have all kinds of good stuff in it. You know, I'd have, oh, what do you take on a picnic? Toblerone bars, you know, would definitely have that. You'd have to have that, right? crackers and cheese, something to drink, and more Toblerone bars. You just got to have that, right? And, and so that's what we think of. What if you went there and you didn't have anything? What if you were living in such absolute radical poverty that you didn't have a thing to share? You had nothing that you could give to your neighbor. Because you went there hungry. What if you went to hear Jesus that day and your stomach was growling? And what if you were just so caught up in anxiety and fear because you didn't know how you were going to feed your children and you didn't know how you were going to feed yourself? One verse from last week's pericope that really stands out to me is verse 15. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew himself again to be by the mountain alone. To be on the mountain by himself alone. When I was a freshman at Arkansas Tech University, I lived in Turner Hall. ATU didn't have any frat houses. So you know what that meant. That meant that all the Greeks lived in the dorms with everybody else. And let me tell you, those dorms were loud. Absolutely loud. And you know, where I was from, my neck of the woods, you know, a great majority of the population was Southern Baptist. So you can just imagine those 18 and 19 year old Southern Baptists who they're finally free of their parents' chains You know, they're finally free, and they're singing Amazing Grace indeed, right? Because they have all this newfound freedom. And so that's what our dorm basically was made up of. But there was this one person, and he lived on the first floor. And he was different from all the rest of us. Here we were, 18, 19, early 20s, and he was in his 60s. Here, we spoke Southern English, and he spoke with a thick German accent. And one day I was in his room, and we were talking away, and and all of a sudden it came out that he served in the German army during the Third Reich. And, And I was 18, and so you can just imagine how indignant I was, right? 18 years old, you think you know so much. I was just absolutely indignant. I couldn't believe what he told me. Absolutely, I was stunned. I said, how could you serve in the Third Reich? How could you serve in the army that its leader was Adolf Hitler? And he looked at me. And I'll never forget that look. It was a look of how do, I, how do I get him to understand? How do I help him to understand something that he's just never experienced? I mean, he's had this habitat which is so different from that world. How do I get him to understand? And he said, Hitler gave me boots for my feet and potatoes for my stomach. We forget the radical poverty that was in Germany at that time. Hitler gave me boots for my feet and potatoes for my stomach. No wonder the crowd at Tabga that day wanted to make Jesus king. Out of out of this boy's offering of five loaves and two fish, he feeds five thousand people. 
5,000 people is how John says it. Of course, you remember in Matthew's gospel, Matthew says it's 5,000 men, not including women and children. And out of these five loaves and two fish, he feeds all these people. Of course we want him to be king. I mean, by the power of his words, he could do that to do something that we were struggling to do. We were struggling, how do we feed our children? How do we feed ourselves? Yes, happy days are here again. We've got the man who can do so much. We've got the man who can do what we're struggling to do, and he can do it just at the sound of his words. Happy days are here again. But it's exactly at this point in the story that we struggle. It's exactly at this point that we struggle. Because you see, the crowd has caught up to Jesus. They caught up to Jesus, and they're looking for him. And he's saying, well, well did you come out here because you want some more food, that you had your fill of bread? Is that why you've come looking for me? And the answer is, of course, right? Absolutely, of course. And then Jesus tells them something they didn't want to hear. Something that's not always easy for you and me to hear. Jesus said, but that's not what I've come here for, to give you bread that perishes. I've come to give you spiritual nourishment that will never go away. For you see, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. We gather here today before the mystery of these words. And we gather here before the mystery of the bread and the cup. Let us take just a few moments now to prepare our hearts to receive these amazing gifts given to us by God. Let us take just a few moments to prepare our hearts. We ask this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.